purpose of this video is to continue our discussion of the uh, theory for the dual and we'll also <clears throat> uh, write and prove the dual theorem. So let's remember where we left off last time. Um, let's see, so last time uh, we left off with, uh, we had uh, weak duality. And if we remember what that said, that said if x, uh, let's say x star and y star are feasible for the primal and dual respectively, then what can we say about the corresponding values of z and w? I think we'll recall that z is less than or equal to w. <coughs> and in fact, uh, that was how it was, how y was constructed, right? And what a strong duality then? Strong duality says that if we have x star and y star such that uh, z is equal to w, then <coughs> x star is a maximizer for the primal and y star is a minimizer minimizer for the dual good all right so i wanted to uh, talk about uh, a couple more lemmas um it talks about uh, some of the uh, feasible feasible sets and unboundedness of the primal and the dual. Um, before you do that, I might just mention right uh, in the strong duality, I forgot to mention something. Uh, X star and Y star are feasible, right? Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, write down our, what we might say are lemmas three and four. And they say that if the primal is unbounded, what can you say about the dual? The dual is infeasible. Well, why is that? Uh, well, you might think about it this way. Uh, let's think about it as a proof by contradiction. So suppose that the dual is feasible. Then there is a y in the dual such that the w value is bigger than anything in the primal. That means that the primal is bounded, but we said that the primal was unbounded. Okay, therefore there's a contradiction. See if you can write that up as a reasonable argument now. And so similarly, by the way, uh, since the dual of the dual is the primal, uh, this works the other way as well. If the dual is unbounded, then the primal is infeasible, and that's, so that's what lemma is 3 and 4. And we should say it is possible for both to be uh, infeasible. And there's a nice example in your book that shows that. All right. So lemmas three and four are, are uh, actually homework problems. So uh, think about how you might set those up. Now we're on to the main feature of 6.7, and that is the dual theorem. The dual theorem. And so if beta is uh, an optimal basis for the primal, then y, which is equal to, this is our definition of y, cb transpose b inverse transpose, that just makes it a column, 
is the solution to the dual. Good. And furthermore, um, because these are optimal, right, we also have z equals w. Okay? Um, by the way, we might also say <coughs> here that uh, if both problems are feasible, then both problems have finite optimal solutions. Okay? All right. So let's see here. Um, how would we prove this? Proof. We need two things. A. Y is feasible. And B. Z equals W. And so if these two things are true, then by strong duality, right, we have uh, optimal solution. Okay, so that's the outline of our proof. Now, uh, part A, why is feasible? How do I show that? We must show that A transpose Y is greater than or equal to C. Okay, so let's go ahead and just plug that in. Uh, a transpose and my y value that I'm looking at is CB transpose B inverse transpose. And the question is, is this greater than or equal to C? Well, <clears throat> if we look at this, uh, let's get rid of the transposes. And so what I'll end up doing is transposing both sides. So transpose then um, this can be written in reverse order, right? CB transpose B inverse A is going to be greater than or equal to C transpose. Hmm, that looks familiar. In fact, what this is saying is that minus C transpose plus CB transpose B inverse A is greater than or equal to zero. Have we seen that before? This is the optimal row zero. And so that is true. And so uh, therefore, if you actually wanted to write this up nicely as a proof, you would start here with your optimal row zero and you'd work your way backwards. And then uh, because this is true, we get that uh, y is feasible. Okay, I'm gonna let you do that. So this is kind of our scratch work. Uh, part B, z equals w. Well, let's just write down our z. z is equal to, do you remember? CB transpose B inverse uh, B inverse B. Well, let's just go ahead and replace that with, uh, uh, isn't that y transpose times b? And isn't that our w? Oh, we're done. That was fast. Okay, so we now have the dual theorem. <coughs> Okay, so what we're going to do next is to figure out how to actually compute the dual theorem, or th compute the dual, and um, it's it's not too bad, but I think what I'll do is I'll uh, jump to a, uh, I'll jump to a um, uh, slideshow, but, be oh gosh, before I do that, let me just mention here that if y if y is equal to CB transpose B inverse transpose, oh gosh darn it, transpose, then um, how am I going to compute, is it possible to compute this easily? Well think about row zero again. Now for what columns of A and what values of C will this just give me the the dual. Well, if uh, we look at a column, let's say AJ of matrix A corresponding to a slack variable, then that means that AJ is actually equal to E I say, uh, I know that's kind of bad notation, but um, it's just that the index of your I, uh, of your one may not be the same thing as a J. In fact, it probably won't be. Okay, so um, 
That also means that CJ is equal to zero, right? In the cost uh, vector. And so therefore, uh, in your in your final tableau, right, the SI coefficient will be CB transpose B inverse times, uh, well, it's the ith, the ith coordinate of that, right? And so that is equal to y sub i. And of course, there may be some other ways of computing that as well. You may not have a slack variable. Instead, you may have, uh, if you have an excess variable, we'll have to take the um, our uh, C B transpose B inverse, uh, whichever coefficient we're looking at, we'll have to be minus, right? We'll have to multiply that by minus one. Okay. And then similarly, we could even do this for a artificial variable. Uh, what happens in an artificial variable? Subtract M to get uh, yi. Okay, and so uh, we're going to uh, try this <clears throat> in the next video. I'll see you then.